Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and I have an exciting build video for you today. And I am talking about this model right here. This is the Gecko Models 16 scale Panzer II F. And um, you may have seen the preview video I did on it showing all the parts inside. Well, I have actually built it and I'm going to show you that whole build today. Now, I actually started this immediately after I did the preview video but halfway through it, I got the whole lower hull done and then my uh, 16 scale Tiger came in, the actual real version of it. So I had, of course, had to build that up, which that video is also on the channel here, just one before this. But I've gone ahead and once I got that one all done and started doing that one, and that is it right here. And it is a beautiful kit. There are uh, a decent number of parts on this, but uh, lots and lots of detail and it's going to go perfect because I'm going to do this one up in the paint job of North Africa. Uh, you'll see at the end of this video here, I've got my Panzer I from TACOM in North Africa and my Das Werk 16 scale Panzer III in North Africa. So we'll have a one, two, and three all in a row on it there. So, so as you can see, this is going to be just the build portion of a, a, assembling the kit. I do plan on painting it and I'll have a video on that. We're going to do the North African motif to go with the, the Panzer I and III, like I just said. So we want to take the time and chip it up and beat it up, make it look really cool, fit into that little lineup there. So I'm excited to share this with you. So let's get started. Okay, let's start off by building the lower hull. Now, on this first step here, I'm showing you in step one how the instructions call out for this here. Because there's a lot of little, little pieces here that we need to get all glued up and in the correct angle. So I've gone ahead and to jump a little bit ahead and started to do that. And you can see how this will get mated right into the back of the rest of it. Now, I don't know how much weight bearing um, or if these are structural, they must be structural because why else would you put the bracing inside there like that? So I've made sure that we put extra cement on those and gave them plenty of time to dry. So we have a nice stiff bottom of the vehicle. Now it doesn't call out yet to glue this on. I'm just showing you where this is gonna go. It's actually gonna go on in just a couple of steps. So we'll move this to the side right now. And what I'm gonna show you here is the side of the tank and there is an A and B side. So they're gonna get stacked up just like this here. Actually, no, just like this here, excuse me. So it's gonna get stacked up just like this and glued together. But before we do that, we have to insert these little pieces here, which I'll show you too. I've gone ahead and jumped ahead and built them already. You don't actually apply any cement. They're pressure fitted inside there and you get that little shaft in there. Do have to clean up a little bit on them, but I wanted to give you an idea how it's gonna go. So once that goes in there, it'll get glued into place right here with that peg staying up. Not quite sure yet at this point why it needs to be done that way, but that's how the instructions are gonna call out. So once that gets glued in, the other side comes in and kind of like sandwiches it together and holds it into place there, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all five of these glued into place. And then of course, glue the entire edge of this down right now. Okay, as I start to apply glue in here, there's one other quick little builder's tip I should point out to you too. There are some little areas of where the injectors pins are kind of sticking up right here. And you wanna make sure these are perfectly sanded flush. So it may not look it, but it is completely flat there. That way, when you go and attach this piece, you're not gonna have any ripples or bulges inside there. Okay, here is the side of the hull. Uh, I gave it a couple of hours for the inside and outside to uh, cement together, putting a little extra all on the seams in there, making sure it's nice and dry and sturdy. And now I'm attaching some of these little pegs. You can see I've already got four of them in a row in there. We're putting the fifth one into place here. And what these are here, this is where the leaf spring is going to come up underneath there. It kind of stops the leaf spring from going all the way up. And then once we get that on there, we will be able to attach these. These are the final stop for the suspension arms as they go on. And there is definitely a top and bottom the way they have a little bit of a flare on there. And I also have a symbol, and a symbol wasn't much to it. It's a matter of putting the inside part of the return roller up here. And I just have to sand the seam out of there. And once I do that, I'll be able to attach all of 
the return rollers too. So I will go ahead and get all of that glued on right now and then we'll start working on the suspension arms. So to start this next part of the build off, I thought I would show you the instructions so it'll be a little bit easier to visualize what I'm talking about. Now each side of the, uh, the vehicle has five different suspension arms on it and they are all different. And if you'll notice by the numbers that are called out on each one of them, they require different parts and each one has a little different shape uh, of the leaf springs on there. So my advice as you build this is to build up like for example, this one right here, F1. Build this whole sub-assembly and then literally just attach it into place and get it on the vehicle. So either that or have a good numbering system so you don't accidentally confuse any of the two different ones and then you're trying to put them in the wrong position. Make it a little bit more difficult. Now we'll move those to the side here and I've got one of the arms just put together kind of quickly here. I've got to do some cleanup. There is a pretty good size seam that goes down the middle of each one of them here. But once you get this one... This happened the one I happened to build the one in the back first, but it'll snap into place and you see how the leaf spring will go up underneath here. So in real life, this thing would flex and if it flexed a lot, this little cup would get um, caught by that little that little peg, I guess if it was doing some really, really big suspension. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these built up. And what I've done here is this is the other side of the vehicle, which I've built all of the suspension arms. Put them into place here and got it all uh, glued up nicely to let you see what it's going to look like. I also attached the idler on the back here, is, or yeah, the idler wheel on the back of the vehicle. You do want to hold off before you do attach the drive sprocket. There we are. Here is our uh, one complete side and one that is almost complete. And you can see uh, we've got all the suspension arms in place here. Uh, the top one up here has the drive sprocket, which I'm going to show you what we need to do to make this one the same way. I do need to install this front little uh, extra piece of side hull, just like that. You see how it's keyed into place. Pretty hard to mess that up. And then once we get that, we can go ahead and attach the drive sprocket, which the drive sprocket will move here as well. And that is all accomplished by putting this little cap on the pin. Now, little word of warning, the, the pin that comes out of the drive sprocket is very, very small. It does not stick very far in here. So you gotta be very careful when you put this cap on there that you don't glue it to the transmission housing and then it will not allow that to spin anymore. But once that gets done there, we'll be able to go ahead and glue it just into place, just like the other one, just like that. Also, I started putting these two together. There are uh, both sides of the, of the wheel. So then you have a center that you can see I started to sand. And once we get that done, I get all those sanded, I can go ahead and glue those all into place, just like this. And you can see how it's starting to come about. Very unusual to, to build all of this without having even, you know, attached any of this to the rest of the lower hull. But it's kind of a different way. It's a little, little interesting the way it goes together. Now, once I get the, the front drive sprocket on, I can go ahead and start building up the lower hull. There it is, guys. Here is the built-up lower hull. Now, I've also put the uh, the road wheels in the place here, and that is partially to uh, to make sure that the entire vehicle is laying on the ground completely flat. All uh, five road wheels on each side are on the ground, as you can see here. Uh, the way I described to you earlier about gluing on the side to the floor and then kind of working the panels all together, that did work out. Uh, not going to not going to sugarcoat it it is a lot of work getting all the panels to line up properly so my recommendation to you is not to let the glue fully dry anywhere on them when you're assembling those pieces just so that if you have to make any adjustments you're not trying to tweak something and when I was first putting the two sides with the floor on there I didn't have everything exactly lined up and with that, one side of the vehicle kind of lifted up a little bit higher in the front here. Uh, I noticed it right away and was it when the, the cement hadn't fully set up, so I was able to tweak it. That is also the reason I applied this front, uh, front plate here. With that on there, it double verified that everything was going to line up. This thing kind of popped right into place here. Uh, no problem. So once you get everything lined up, and as you can see the wheels all touching the ground, 
you'll know that you you've done it correctly and if you let like one side dry overnight you're going to have a nightmare of a time if you did anything wrong so just keep that in mind as you go to build that uh it wasn't difficult it was just hey i really have to pay attention to what i'm doing right now now i'm going to slide this a little bit to the back because you can see in the background the the next step we have is the tracks now i've pre-assembled a uh a full set of tracks right here that'll go on it takes 107 tracks to do a side and that's what we have on this one right here uh let's see if we can just kind of pop these on here the, the nice thing about the pinnable tracks is you'll be able to flap this around flap this around and then just slide the pin right in there go on there and then when it's time to paint pull the pin out don't glue that last pin in and you'll be able to paint the tracks separately and i still have a little cleanup to do on those but now what i'm going to do is since i've got one side done and i figured out how to do it i'm going to take and show you how the actual tracks go together for the other side keep in mind also too almost didn't notice this the first time when you're looking at the tracks there are one track for both sides but you want the uh, the pin the head of the pin to be on the outside. So on one side of the track, you got to have them running one way. On the other side of the track, you have to have the pin going the other way. And that's why you have that little that little cap on the outside here, always on the outside. If you do it the other way, you're going to have that little pin sticking through and that won't look right. So let me show you how the tracks go together. Okay, so let's show you how the tracks go together. And the, the quickest way to show you is how they actually come on the sprue. So you see, we've got the tracks back and forth. So once you cut them off, you've got two cleanup points here, one cleanup point on the other side. The track pins come molded like this. So it's just a matter of cutting them off right at the tip where the head is. And then I will zoom in here and let you see. Uh, this set of tracks is going in the right direction. So we know that the, the pins are gonna go in the correct um, direction as well. And it's just a matter of sliding them together just like that. And it's easier to do this on the edge of a table, but um, not too, too bad right here. So you get the track pin starting to go in there. And with a touch of plastic cement, just touch it right on the backside of the head. Let that sit for eh, maybe like 5, 10 seconds, just so it's not super liquid. And then slide it in. And that'll lock it into place and your tracks will still move. And then it's just a matter of... <laughs> Sanding 107 of those in 107, 108 pins, and you will have a complete set of tracks to go all the way around here. Okay, here is the lower hull mostly put together here. You can see the tracks are all in place now. I did go ahead and attach one of the fenders, and that is my test side, so I can show you how the other side goes together. There is some photo etch here in the back as well as the spring that I had to uh, attach on there. Now, up in the front here, there were some little uh, areas that needed a little bit of putty work. So I put a little bit of putty on and also using a little bit of Mr. Surfacer 1000, just the tiniest little touch over here in the corner, just brushing it in there and that'll fill up any little cracks that you might have that don't look proper. Uh, we can go in there after it dries and just lightly sand with some real fine sandpaper. And then I like to hit it with a coat of Mr. Surfacer 1000 in a spray can. And that kind of just levels everything off. And you see, I've done it all along the front here, as well as around these uh, tow cables. And it just, just really cleans up things very, very nicely. So I'll work on that some little bit more, but now I'll show you how the actual fender goes on. And this is one of the fenders that we have here. They're all notched as you can see here, and they just correspond to the other side of the notch. And we just will go, of course, glue those into place. Once that gets glued on, move that for a minute, we can go ahead and start attaching the upper part of the hull. So we've got our rear where the engine is, and this portion here, this is part of where the turret is going to attach, and I've got to attach all of these walls that I, I've started assembling. I've put the uh, the vision ports on. We've got uh, four pieces of that that are gonna all get glued into place, and then that'll place right on top of it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue these together. This requires uh, some, not having, basically not having a camera in your way because we want all to be as straight as possible, and I will show you how all of that mates together once I get this glued up. Here it is. Here is our parts to create our uh, upper part of our hull. 
And this part in general, I am not gonna lie, this uh, had some difficulty to put together. It was a lot harder than I thought to get all of these facets into place and get them lined up. And it kind of fought me a little bit, but uh, I worked through it. Not impossible, of course, but it was a little bit difficult. And this part here is our rear engine. I put the hatches and the hinges on and I'll show you how I'm going to put all this together. So everything here kind of just locks into place. You can kind of feel how it just mates into the right area. Then we'll drop this little panel in here. Actually, this goes like this. And then this portion will get dropped in here. Of course, all of this will get glued. Uh, there is a stowage bin. This is a option on it that you can either stow it over here or you can create it to fit in this portion of the, uh, the build. I'm putting it on this side because I created the stowage rack here for the, uh, the jerry cans that'll go on the side there. And lastly, I'll have to put install this antenna holder and the antenna even this antenna this antenna was like five parts to put together inside here so lots of little parts in here but i think it looks really good and of course that'll get pushed all the way inside there so i will go ahead and glue all of these pieces into place and then i will come back and we're, we're going to leave all of the tools and accessories off for now that's one of the next steps that's calling out so if i'm not mistaken i think it's time to start working on the turret next here is what all of the uh, the storage boxes on the side, as well as the storage rack for the jerry cans, looks like all put into place. Also, I did go ahead and build the exhaust, which is just a couple of parts and this piece of photo etch that you have to bend around here as a little protective cover. And the only other thing I put on here were the side brackets that went underneath here. You can still see them as they poke through. So with this uh, this part being done like this, it is now completed the lower hull, completed other than like tools, things like that. And now we can go on to start building the gun and the turret. Okay, as promised, I'm going to start working on the turret here. Now, there is a lot of parts, a lot of little parts in the turret. In fact, um, I'm going to show you just this little piece of the instructions. This is just for the cupola. You can see how many pieces are inside that. So needless to say, I'm going to start, as you can see here, creating sub-assemblies that it's just going to make it quicker and easier. Try to film as much of it as possible, but so much of this tiny little tedious work that my hand or the camera is going to be in the way, but I'll give it kind of a breakdown of what's going to happen here. So here we have, I guess this is part of the mantlet. I mean, I always picture the mantlet being up front, but this is the, uh, the part behind the mantlet. This is going to get attached in here with these adapters here which have a little hole in there i've glued one side in to hold it and then what i'll do is i'll come back and glue not the hole but the actual brace and that way the uh, the gun will be able to go up and down just like that uh, we'll get that glued in then of course once that is all attached the whole piece will get attached right here up in the front and then of course the bottom will come in here like this so it's not very difficult there's just a lot of little parts that are going to be making up we also need to go ahead and put all of the little vision ports in on the sides here and then of course all those parts that will make up for the cupola here now the cupola is made of lots of parts like i showed you so this little hatch will drop up inside here this will go up inside under that and i need of course put all of the glass inside there plus also assemble the two centimeter gun as well as the mg34 which i've already started doing all that will get mounted up behind there so i'm going to go ahead and put most of this together right now and then i'll come back and show you what it looks like okay you can see i've got the uh, the turret all assembled now and actually the part count wasn't as bad as it looked in the pictures, it went together pretty quickly. But now I've spent the last three and a half hours putting on all of the little parts, all the little accessory parts. So like the area where that's going to attach the spare wheel, the road, uh, the headlights, the, the no tech light, the horn, stuff like that. Also started creating all of the jerry cans for the back here. There is a little photo etch insert that uh, replicates the crimp in there. Plus there's lots of other little things like the lights, 
all those little tiny parts that I left off until the very end of the, the build. And that is so they're not in the way and I'm not knocking off all of those parts on it there. So I've got just probably about maybe 15, 20 more little parts to get glued on here. Little tiny things like the brackets and things like that. And these lifting hooks as you see me putting on right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and check it over to see if there's anything else other than the tools. And then I will give it a quick shot of Mr. Surfacer Gray to uh, put everything all in the same color. You can see here on the back, like the uh, the stowage bin is in a darker gray, and that's because that hasn't been sprayed yet. Also, I did have to put a tiny bit of uh, filler right in here. Couldn't get it to meet completely, but it was very, very minor. And I'll just do a little sanding on it and a little filling with the, uh, the primer, and that should be ready to go. So let me get all these other parts on, and I'll come back and give you a final reveal before it's time to paint. Well, here you go, guys. Here is the completed model. And completed in the sense it doesn't have the tools, the clear parts, or any of those other kind of things on there right now. We're going to put those on all after I do the final paint job. As you see here in front, I have my 16 scale tank commander figure out in front to kind of give you guys an idea of scale. Obviously, this is a much smaller vehicle than the, uh, the Tiger that I'm working on right now. Now, the kit, uh, as you watch me build the whole thing, is very, very detailed. Very, very nice kit. The fit is very good. There is a very, very high part count. Lots of little, uh, little detail parts, but in the end, if you don't mind spending the time, I think it turns out very, very nicely. So as we go do the 360 around here, you can see all of the detail that is on here. I have sprayed the entire thing with... Uh, uh, Mr. Surfacer 1000, kind of give it a little primer coat there before we paint it. Now, I will be painting this as well as the Tiger very, very soon. I wanted to actually, I started this kit first, then the Tiger came in, and I took a break from this and started building the Tiger. So now both of them are built, and uh, I can start painting them. And I'm going to show you those right now, as well as the Panzer 1 and 3, to give you a, a scale comparison. There you go. First comparison, uh, we're going to go big first. And you're looking at the Panzer II right next to the brand new, soon to be released Andy's Hobby Headquarters Panzer VI or Tiger Tank. And as you can see, the Tiger is a lot, lot bigger than the, uh, the Panzer II. The Panzer II is more akin to like a big SUV. Uh, and this is like a Mack truck right here. But that gives you kind of an idea of what the size difference is on here. And of course, like I said earlier, I have not painted the Tiger yet, but I'll be working on that very, very soon. And now I'm going to show you a comparison alongside the Panzer 1 and 3. And here is the side-by-side -side of the, uh, the first three Panzers. On the left, we have the Panzer 1 from Tacom in 16 scale, done up in the North African markings. Of course, on the right, we have Das Werks 116 scale Panzer III, also done up in North African markings. And of course, one in the middle is going to be done the same. So I'll have all three, one, two, and a Panzer III, all done up in North Africa. And that, of course, will be what the next video will be. We'll be painting this as well as the Tiger. I'm going to start painting both of those right away after uh, done uploading this video. Well, there you go, guys. There is a look at how the uh, Gecko model 16 scale Panzer II F goes together. As you can see, it is a really pretty kit right here. And I think it's going to go really well with all the other kits that I just showed you in there. So, I, obviously, I've got a lot of painting to do. I've got this to paint. I'm going to have the Tiger video all painted, all that kind of stuff very, very soon. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you, as always, for watching. And please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.